Welcome back to the Bible Channel. We have uh, the first of a series on actual book reviews of early English Bible translations. So the one we're reviewing today was the very first complete English Bible. Uh, it's termed the Wycliffe Bible. It's John Wycliffe's translation of the Holy Scriptures from the Latin Vulgate. And, and just then for clarification's sake, uh, Wycliffe translated the New Testament and parts of the Old, and he died before the Old was um, completed. And then another guy followed. But the, so let's just read the back of it. And this edition here is the extra large edition. Uh, 1388 was the year it came out. And in the year 1388, it's what's known as Middle English. It's, uh, when I open the book, you'll see it. And this volume here isn't an actual uh, facsimile copy, like a scanned photo page copy of an old uh, issue. There's parts of it there. It's in modern uh, print, but it's still spelled Old English style. Um, so you can see how far the English language has come since that year. So yeah, this is the Wycliffe Bible. All right, let's read this back of it, just to give you a little example of what's here. It says, <clears throat> Here is John Wycliffe's greatest accomplishment, the translation of the Holy Scriptures into English. Producing the first complete English Bible, Wycliffe was the first to set aside Latin as the language of the Scriptures and to reach the English people in their own tongue. Working from contemporary manuscripts of the Latin Vulgate, he sought no strange English, but only the easiest, most common, albeit the most Latin-like language possible. Latin constructions and word order were preserved even where there was conflict with English idioms. His work was used by the Lollards, a group of errant, errant preachers or poor priests who went about preaching reading and teaching the English Bible. Wycliffe's translation of the New Testament in 1380 and Old Testament in 1388, which actually complete, was completed by Nicholas of Hereford. That's the guy who, like I was saying earlier, um, continued the uh, Old Testament. Opened a new epoch in the history of the Bible. In this new edition, Lamppost has taken a 600-year-old ancient translation and made a modern, clean, readable version, a simple yet fun dichotomy, reaching a project that all book and book lovers are sure to appreciate and enjoy. So it's put out by this group, Lamp Post. I never heard of them until I purchased this edition. All right, so let's open it up. All right, so we'll open it up. We got the Wycliffe Bible. Again, John Wycliffe's translation of the Holy Scriptures from the Latin Vulgate, Old and New Testament. <clears throat> I like, uh, I enjoy these old Bibles. Oh, and this is interesting too, because it's kept the old spelling of the um, books of the Bible. Certain of them are the same, like here. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Those are all the same as we know them. But now here you got Joshua, that we know as Joshua. And then you got, um, by today's English, you'd pronounce that Igus. But it means judges, because in Old English, I is a J. Uh, then Ruth, we know that is Ruth. This one is Thuria for a loop. What we know is 1 Samuel is actually called 1 Kings. 2 Samuel is actually 2 Kings. Now what we know is 1 Kings is actually 3 Kings. And then 2 Kings as we know it is 4 Kings. And then 1st Paralipomen. One more time. Paralipomen. So we know that is Chronicles 1 and Chronicles 2. So, uh, yeah, like I say, interesting. Then... First Esdras is Ezra, second Esdras is Nehemiah, 
Hester is Esther, Job is Job, Psalms is Psalms, we just have the P on the front, but it's still silent, it's pronounced the same, Parabellus, that's the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song is of Song is, the Song of Solomon, Yesiah, or Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Lamentations, Ezekiel, so yeah, this is uh, interesting. Daniel, Osi, that's Hosea. Joel, Amos, Abedus, that's Obadiah. Uh, Jonah, Micah, Mikey. Nahum, Habakkuk is Abakkuk. This one's completely different. Sophone is Zephaniah. Sophone. Agi is Haggai. <coughs> Zachary is Zechariah. And Malachi is Malachi. Then that's the Old Testament. And this, Wycliffe actually translated what's known as the, um, the uh, Apocrypha. And classically it was sandwiched in between the Old and New Testaments. And this edition um, doesn't have the Apocrypha, but it does have the two extra chapters in the book of Daniel. So in this Bible, Daniel has 14 chapters, but the last two that were added from the Apocrypha have nothing to do with the entire book of Daniel, the first 12. All right, so now let's pick up on the New Testament. Look at these things. Now you got Matthew, Marcus, Luke, June, Deedus of Apostles, the Deeds of the Apostles, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephes, Ephesus, <laughs> Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Tidy is Titus, Philemon is Philemon, Hebrews, that would be Hebrews, James, 1 Patre, 2 Patre, 1 June, 2 June, 3rd June, Judas, and Apocalypse, or Revelation. So those are the old English uh, spellings of the actual books. Now continuing in this volume, next page. So here is an actual, um, what the Wycliffe translation actually looked like. So if this actually was a photo, that's extremely challenging to read to the modern English readers of today. Um, but here, this is uh, John chapter 1, verse 1. You can kind of make it out, at least I can. It says, In the beginning uh, was, and ye is the, I think, the word, because this backwards looking, almost looks like a two, but it's a R. So I'm pretty sure that's word. And something was God. God was... So yeah, very challenging to read. Uh, that's the man right there, John Wycliffe. Um, a legend, a man totally before his time. And uh, in Bible history, just a plain badass. So it gives a brief um, biography of Wycliffe here. There's another picture of him right here. And then the continuation of the Gospel of John. Yeah, very uh, challenging. All right, so again, we got the photocopy of this. What else also, too, is um, <clears throat> there's a decent section on John Purvey who continued Wycliffe's translation of the Old Testament and then went through and revised the entire Wycliffe translation into more um, understandable English. And that's the volume that this Bible does, is the, uh, this guy, John Purvey, his rendition of Wycliffe's translation. So if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have had the complete Bible in English. But this Bible didn't come from the original Hebrew 
or in Greek, it came from the Latin Vulgate. And it even has uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs, Chapter 7. It's completely about John Wycliffe. It talks about how the part I liked is where Wycliffe got sick and was it looked like he was on his deathbed. And then uh, a few of the friars came and he it surprised him. So he just sat up in his bed and he says, I will not die, but I will continue to be a thorn in the uh, friar's side. And then he... After he was raised from that deathbed, that's when he began translating the um, English Bible. Wycliffe stood up against the, uh, what he's seen as corruption, the, um, and he proclaimed things that the Protestant reformers picked up on over a hundred years later, like William Tyndale, Martin Luther, and all them guys. So it gives a little bit of history on John Wycliffe and what a remarkable man he was. So remarkable, in fact, that after the Vatican died, or actually, not the Vatican, after Wycliffe died, they actually dug up his bones over 40 years after he died, dug his bones up, uh, smashed his bones to pieces, and burned the bone fragments. See, because right there is Wycliffe, and they're burning his bones. And then this guy's dumping his ashes into the river Swift. And... Swift ran into the Severn, the Severn into the Narrows, and one historian said, thus the doctrines of Wycliffe spread. Because digging up Wycliffe's bones and burning them had what today is called the Streisand effect. When Google Earth first came out, Barbara Streisand was complaining because people could just look in her backyard. And prior to saying that, nobody was looking in her backyard. But once that went public, a whole bunch of people started looking into it. So... When they dug up Wycliffe and burned his bones, remember this is 40 years after he died, a whole new generation drew attention. Why did, this so, why did they hate this guy so much that they dug his bones up after he was already dead? And then that's when they kicked him out of the church. When they excommunicated Wycliffe, he was dead. Didn't mean to elbow that uh, camera. Alright, so we got the Old Testament. So let's just read Genesis because we're all pretty uh, familiar with that and see how it reads. And there's a lot of uh, old artwork in this edition. I like that. Except, look, he's using a compass, so it's probably Freemason crap. But nonetheless, the, I always enjoy the old artwork. All right, so here we go. Genesis, the book of Genesis, chapter 1. In the beginning, God made of naught heaven, keep in mind in Old English, that the U is actually a V, heaven and earth A. For so the earth was idle and void, and darkness worn on the face of depth. And the Spirit of the Lord was bow run on the waters. And God said, Lit. Light be made, and light was made. And God said the light, that it was good, and he divided the light from the darkness, and he kleptide, we called the light day and the darkness night. The evening and the morning was made, O day. So that's an example of all, or Middle English. So the whole Bible like that reads that way. So it can be challenging. It definitely takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, like what the reformers, like William Tyndale, the English language, had come a, a decent ways when he'd made the New Testament in 1526. Uh, but thankfully, like I say, this book itself is in modern type and font. It just keeps the old English sayings. But again, still a challenge can be challenging to read. I just like uh, collecting Bibles. I've, I have a new appreciation for the old English Bibles. There's some artwork. After um, learning about the received text of Erasmus and how the whole Jesuit plan was to do away with that text, that's where the critical text comes into play. Here we go. Here's another. This is the... Uh, it's the Gutenberg Bible. Yeah, that's old print, how they printed everything. 
So it's a um, it's a good volume. I like it. If you haven't heard about John Wycliffe, you ought to look into him. Very remarkable man. Uh, definitely should be included in Hebrews uh, 11, the Hall of Faith. Because Wycliffe started and is given credit for uh, the first full Bible in the English language. And albeit it's Middle English, it's still English. So uh, I thought it would be a good thing because I got a decent collection going of old English Bibles. And out of all of them, the only one that's not a facsimile or a photocopy is this one. But all the Bibles from this point forth I'll review are all old English photocopy Bibles. So you can actually see what it looked like and how the English read. And um, It's just amazing that if copies survived, because, you know, like the Tyndale New Testament, I mean, they would get burned once it was printed. I mean, the Vatican would buy them up and just to burn them. So the fact we had them and they made copies of them just shows the word of the Lord endures forever. So that's my review for the Wycliffe Bible. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share. Leave your comments. Um, and stay tuned because next we will be reviewing the 1526 Tyndale New Testament.